Hey folks, this is Dakota Cohen here at Cohen Farm. In this video, I'm gonna be interviewing an earth mover who just finished uh, helping us to build this new uh, million and a half gallon dam, as well as a, uh, 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 about a 400 meter swale that, that connects into this dam. And uh, uh, you know we, we got really lucky this year with, um, uh, we, we had uh, the frost didn't go into the ground uh, quite as early and so we were able to, to get this project done just just before this cold weather set in. It's it's pretty miserable out right now but uh, the project's finished and, um, and so in, in this video uh, like I said I'm, I'm going to be interviewing the uh, the earth mover who helped us pull this project off and we're going to be covering um, some of the the uh, the kind of the, the biggest uh, you know questions and, and and insights that I've learned over um, over the you know the last you know eight years of, of doing earthworks on our farm here and uh, this particular earth mover it's the first time I've ever worked with him uh, his name's his name's Tyler he's, he's a young guy about my age uh, who, who's been you know running excavators and, and bulldozers and and graders and stuff basically from the time he could walk and so he's 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 young like me, but he he knows he, he knows his stuff. He's a fantastic operator, and um, he I learned more from him in just the, you know on this one project building this dam and this swale than I than I have from you know working with all my other earth movers and you know and and even taking you know courses and stuff from from Jeff Lawton and watching all those videos online. So there's a ton of insights packed into this in this video. We're going to be talking about things like. Um, how to like you know going over the basics of of machines so you know like what what are the uh, what are all the different kinds of types of, mat of, of machines that you might use you know bulldozers excavators um, uh, you know rock trucks uh, graders w what they're good for what they're not good for um, how to size the appropriate size of machine because within each of those categories you can have you know huge variations in size you know you can have a d3 bulldozer that's got like a 60 horse you know motor in it or you can have you know a d6 or a d7 or a d8 even or or sometimes even even you know bigger machines that have you know 100 100 horsepower or several hundred horsepower engines so you know how do you how do you figure out what size of machine to use for your job uh, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, how to communicate your designs to your earth, earth movers so that they know what you want uh, some of the, the biggest mistakes that I've made well, some of the mistakes that I've made is is just the, the the biggest failures in some of my earthworks projects that I've done on, on my property and some of my clients has just been in a failure to communicate what it is I was actually wanting uh, my earth movers to, to build uh, we're gonna be talking about um, how to you know design things really efficiently uh, we're just going to touch on it in this video I'm going to do another video later on that goes into a lot more detail about um, how to how I've started to kind of design out some of my earth earthworks and uh, you know sightings where to where to put a swale um, uh, where to put a dam stuff like that but in this video it's gonna be just pretty high level uh, we're also going to be talking about um, how to uh, uh, you know how to find a good earth mover. You know how how do you find somebody that um, is going to be trustworthy, um, is is going to you know be safe on the job, and one of the, one of the most important things we're going to be talking about is um, why buying your own machine, you know, buying your own excavator, buying your own bulldozer is probably not a good idea. You know the the thing that I thought for years, and I've heard you know many of my clients say is, oh man, I'm going to spend I'm going to spend you know 50, 60 hundred thousand dollars on earthworks in the next few years of my project I should just buy the machine because it'll pay for itself by the end of the job uh, you're gonna know why that's absolute nonsense and uh, <laughs> by the end of this video uh, we go into that in deep in detail about all of the costs that you don't you know, that are that, you know are, are above and beyond just buying the machine and how long it takes to become good on an excavator uh, and there's you know lots of other little insights uh, um, in, in particular like like for example one of the things that really blew me away that uh, this earth mover Tyler uh, told me on on, uh, on this job was that you know if if you double the size of a machine so if you go from like a 20 ton excavator to a 40 ton excavator um, you know the yeah the 40 ton excavator costs more money per hour uh, you know maybe it goes from you know uh, you know 100 and 
$50 an hour to, uh, you know, $300 an hour. Uh, and so, you know, the cost is doubling. So you think, wow, it's, it's cheaper to get the smaller one. It's actually, compl it's totally the opposite. The, the, even though the machine has doubled in size, the amount of earth that it can move and the efficiency and, and, and how far you can move it, um, it, 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 it more than doubles. You know, it, it, and sometimes it, it quadruples or, or can Im improve by, you know, six times. Um, so th there's, there's just tons of little insights. Uh, I, I encourage you guys to watch this video uh, several times and 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 then you know go out and do an earth mover work reading project and maybe come back and watch it again um there's there's so many little tidbits that are kind of hidden in this in this video now uh, really pay attention to it because oh, and the, the the other thing that we, i i covered in this video is how if you get the design right and if you if you've got good implementation and you've got a good earth mover you can't afford not to do this stuff like um I've, I've built, you know, several million gallon dams on our property and every time I build them they basically, the cost gets cut in half because I'm getting better and better at doing them more efficiently. And so, you know, now I'm able to build, this is a million and a half gallon dugout uh, and, and, and a dam and and just this dugout and dam component, not the not the swale and, and the trenching and stuff that we did, um, was only maybe like $5,000. Like it's it's unbelievably cheap when when you when you get everything right and so uh, you can't afford not to build these kinds of earthworks if you've got the water and stuff to capture. So um, uh, we're, I'm also going to be showing some some footage and stuff in this video from some of the other projects that we've done uh, because this this one's not as pretty because it's kind of you know white and and brown and 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 uh, and, and black because we're in the in the winter time here. So I, I, I'm going to be showing some videos from some of the other earthworks projects that we've done. I've got other videos that I encourage you to check out there. I've got a full, uh, that's over an hour long, kind of giving a tour of all of our um, uh, water harvesting systems on our farm from from last runoff season, which is a really great video to see. And like I said, I'm also gonna be doing uh, another video coming up real soon, showing um, my kind of design uh, approach and and how each of the stages going from like uh, um, you know clarifying what what kind of earthworks you need um, coming up with a, um, a diagnosis for you know where to put them uh, creating a design that's really efficient and effective to build going through the implementation of that design and then monitoring it for you know key insights so that going forward you can you can you know tweak the next on the next design that you do or optimize the implementation you've just completed so i'm gonna that video is gonna be coming out right away but uh um this one is is fantastic i, I hope you guys really enjoy it and i look forward to hearing some of you guys' questions and comments all right let's get into it so the first place i'd like to start is could you kind of go through the uh, the different kinds of machines that most people would be using on a project, uh, you know, like like we just did, where you you know building some kind of a dugout or a pond or a dam or a swale? Like what what are the different kinds of earth movers, and when would you want to use one kind versus the other? Yeah, big question. <laughs> um, okay, so your most common ones are going to be graders, cats, scrapers, and trackos. Yeah. Um, and I think we touched a little bit on rock trucks. They could be involved. Uh, extremely high cost though, because you need it. The, so how do you want to work it? Do you want to go from least amount of cost and or to highest amount of cost? Yeah, I, yeah that, that'd be a great. And then yeah, t talking about where, um, like where they're really good, like in terms of like, you know, these ones are good for like short distances versus yeah. if, you, if you're moving dirt a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay, so cost uh, per cubic meter basis kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Tracos uh, for short distances, obviously going to be the cheapest by a long shot because cat, cats end up, a, undercarriage kills them. Uh, even a D6, you're 23 to $30 an hour, depending on what kind of air, undercarriage you got underneath it, just in undercarriage costs without mechanical. Without 20 to $30 an hour yeah. just in maintenance. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and just for, for folks who aren't familiar, what is the undercarriage of a... Um, so it would be pads, rails, rollers, carriers, sprockets, idlers. Yeah, so it's, it's like the, the track component that yeah. you see on, on all, in all machines, or yeah. the like track holes, bulldozers, they've yeah. all got that undercarriage component. Now that would be a D6, which is a high drive. Um, and then your conventional drives get better. Uh, 
give better um, uh, cost per hour. And, but uh, that's just a manipulation on mechanical uh, mechanical side. Um, and then once you, so yeah, short distances, cats are really good up to 100 yards. Uh, after that, it becomes, um, you'd be into scrapers. Uh, cats and trackles work well together, but trackle will run far less per hour than a, on a cat of a similar horsepower rate. Um, so interesting. So the, the cat will outproduce the hoe. So uh, it depends. The, Not usually so though. Is, so, is it the other way around? Yeah. So it, the, the hoe, the hoe can move more dirt per hour yeah. than the cat can. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Usually it's just on how far, like if you have to handle the material again and again, and then how you push, so like a cat, whereas a hoe can bucket it and swing, right? Your, uh, your cats will have to trough. <laughs> And you have to actually properly trough. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, you showed me some videos there. Where guys will push the windrow, right? Yeah. And that you're just pushing dirt over and over and over again. You have to keep it on your blade and carry it. Yeah. And a dozer doesn't actually. A lot of people misconceive. One of the most common things I even see with dirt movers is they'll they figure that as soon as your material is rolling on your blade, you're pushing. Yeah. You're actually picking up and you're burning undercarriage, you're burning fuel, you're burning time. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to, dozer is designed to pick up and carry out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Cause, and, and that's the thing is like, if, cause if with, in a situation like that, you're, you're digging into com material you've already compacted exactly. and, and you're, you're working it over and over again. And so, I mean, I guess maybe before we even go into the machine, like all the different machines, like the, the, the core principle of earth moving is like the, the, the farther you have to move it, yeah the more cost and the more times you have to move it, the more cost. Yeah, three main rules, right? You only move it once if you can. Yeah. Um, you move it as cheaply and as quickly as possible. Yeah. And then um, you, you, you spend the least amount of money, like uh, getting your equipment there, your overall cost management, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. you bring a big enough piece of equipment too. Uh, which we were talking about before. Yeah, yeah, um, and we'll we'll cover that and uh, again here. So the now with with those those kind of like three main principles for earth movers. Yeah, now we've, we've talked about so you know cats are really good for like hundred yard pushes. Yeah. If you're moving dirt within that distance, they're that's kind of optimal. Uh, whereas as long as you don't have to dig. Yeah, as, yeah, as long as you're not digging. Where was it? Where would an excavator be really useful? Or trackle? uh, are uh, great for loading and uh, digging. Um, they're going to be shorter though. They're going to be, you know, 30 yards, yeah. 40 yards, somewhere in that range. Cause they have to handle it so many times. Yeah. Uh, and then anything over 80 yards you're into, you'll see a lot of guys try and do the rock truck and scrape uh, rock truck traco and cause it has to be a combination. So rock truck traco and cat, you need one to spread, you need one to dump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you need one to pick up. Right. Yeah. So you, you've got three guys running yeah. instead of one with a scraper. Yeah. Right. And oh, so, okay. but your scrapers have a disadvantage too, cause they can't load worth a damn. Yeah. Um, so you either have to have a trackle loading them or a cat pushing them. Now they're quick, but they also cost a lot of money. The most act actually the most expensive part of a scraper that not a lot of people know about is actually the neck, the neck where the joints there yeah, where pivots. Yeah. Yeah. Where it steers from. That is actually the line boring is what runs the cost there. Interesting. Um, by far, yeah. The tires, everybody looks at the tires and they're like, hey, tires are $8,000. Like, oh my God, <laughs> you have a flat. And it's like, no, that's that's the least of your worries. You blow a tire, like you get good good life usually out of the tires. But um, it's the neck, the rebuilding, the maintenance. That's kind yeah. of... Yeah, and so the, um, that's... We'll, we'll cover kind of maintenance of all the machines in a, a bit later. But uh, I think that's... A, the the one we missed was a grader. Where, yeah. where would a grader be useful? So graders are great. Actually, they'll move dirt cheaper than a cat. The problem is graders, they'll slope up to three to one. Cats will slope up to two to one. Hose will do a one to one. Yeah. Um, but a grader has limits in material, uh, like, so they don't do well with rocks and they don't, yeah. they don't sh load in a short period of time. So they take a little bit more time. They're designed to work in one inch and, you know, yeah. two inch increments, whereas cat can bulk out. Yeah. Um, graders still bulk very cheap uh, because they don't have the undercarriage costs. Um, but they do have limits with wetness and material. Like if the material's damp yeah. and they're spinning, mm -hmm. then you might have to switch to chains. There's other little things you can do, but they don't run optimally in wet material. Yeah. And um, 
but they will push a long ways. They will bulk. Um, you want to sit, but you wouldn't want anything underneath 200 and 225 horse, something like that. Um, that would be the smallest I'd ever run any ways to. Yeah. They're, uh, you can get them all the way up to like a 16, which is I think 400 horse. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then the with with each of those kinds of machines, you, you mentioned the um, w so which one of those is is like for um, uh, you know kind of lay those out in terms of cost in terms of like you know if you're having to move material you know which I know it's kind of difficult because it's there's like the distance yeah you know, that, that. so if you're just moving short distances uh, your traco like if you did a similar plot plan to the way you did yeah. in that job where you're mm -hmm. moving the dirt as short a distance as possible, your hole is right beside your, mm -hmm. then yeah, track hole. Um, simply because you're not moving the material very far and you can do it in a fair number of swings. We were also able to use a fair size track hole to mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Um, so it, the material would have been very cheap to move, but the um, then it would come to a cat. The cat has a disadvantage though, obviously, because it cannot dig like a track oak can. Yeah. So those slopes and yeah. everything like that, they would have yeah, see, trouble. And that's where like the old um, PFRA dugouts, they used to dig those with cats, yeah. but they were digging the long ways, right? Yeah. And I think, I mean, from the guys that I've talked to who had them dug with those, you, you could do a million gallon dugout in a day, just just pushing out on either end with a D6. Hmm. And, um, but that you needed that long push, and you need a four to one side slope on either end, mm -hmm. and and you know they weren't as nice on the the edges because you're just kind of you know gouging stuff out. But yeah. that that's where with with the design that we were going with, because you know the dam was this way and my hole was this way as well, it wasn't didn't work. Versus if I wanted to use a cat, I'd have to push out this way and then turn, and then spread everything, and so it it wasn't it wouldn't have been an efficient no thing no. to. The funny thing is, guys still liked. Of the older generation uh, still very attached to cats yeah. and I mean they're fun don't get me wrong they're a fun machine I spent a lot of years on them but um, they're not it's shifting the trend is shifting uh, trackos have come in they've cut the cost so much they have so much more power they're your muscle on site yeah and then you have believe it or not it's actually switching to graders where you can because the creator runs so much cheaper your tires will last 6,000 hours versus your, you know, your cats, which is, and tires you can put on for 15,000 bucks, like a good set. Yeah. A six. Um, your, um, your cat costs, your undercarriage costs are up to 60,000 to do a D6. Oh. And then you only get 2,500, 3,000 hours out of it. Wow. So that's like four or five times the cost for, um, <clears throat> that's interesting. So, I mean, f for most people who are doing, you know, the kind of stuff that we just did where, you know, it's a swale that's a few, you know, hundred meters long and a dugout that's, yeah. you know, you know, a million gallons or something like that. For most people, it's going to be just an excavator yeah. and, and it's kind of the, the size will vary that and we'll talk about that. But like, w when would it make sense for you to bring an excavator and a, ca a cat in? Because those are kind of long push, right? Yeah. But um, again, then you have to watch your uh, manipulation of mobilize mobilization costs but then how big a cap are you bringing in because anything under a d6 is a joke um <laughs> yeah it's, it's i know might as well be out there with a shovel <laughs> yeah it's uh why well, we saw it ourselves right you yeah. could move as much with a john deere tractor and a little bulldozer more than yeah. a d3 or a d5 <clears throat> right like they're nothing yeah. um, they're it's cute because in the oil field everybody likes them because they bill out at a low rate and yeah. it takes them forever to do a job so your consultants get paid by the day yeah and they get more days out of the job yeah whereas it's like building in right yeah. and you, there's there's advantages to them like in soft ground yeah where you can't have a tough time walking but then your traco takes over anyways because it can paw around yeah. versus uh your cat which as soon as it sinks it's done yeah well and those things the kind of work that we're going to be doing you'd never be working yeah. in that kind of ground anyways so I mean that so the, the big takeaway here is like is you know excavators like for the most part it's like keep try to have only one machine if if, yeah. if possible yeah. at, at all costs and i made this mistake the with the last dam that i built i i thought it'd be faster to have two mm -hmm. and um and it ended up kind of running the cost because like one's always waiting on the other guy or they can if, if they're not in sync and they're not used to or kind of, sized appropriately exactly yeah if, yeah if one is out producing the other which happened with you know i had a it was a 20 ton hoe with a D3 cat. 
And so the hoe was making these mountain piles and the, the cat just couldn't get through them. Yeah. And so, um, you know, then he had to kind of take off a side slice and you know, it, just, it wasn't optimal versus, yeah. you know, I really liked the way that, that, you know, you were working this time was just yourself. And then you know what you're doing and you don't have to think about it, what anybody else is doing. Yeah. And, and you can kind of stage your material. And, and I was really impressed with how, how efficiently, um, you know, stuff got moved around with just one machine. I, I thought I was going to have to do a lot more pushing with my equipment than, than yeah. I needed to. But for the most part, I just, I stopped because it was, wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm.